Welcome back to the shop. Today we're talking framing layout basics. So I got a mock-up plan here that we're going to work off of. A pencil, which I'm substituting a Sharpie for, for camera's sake. Tape measure, square, framing nail or two and a quarter nails, and a saw. Let's take a look at the plans together to see what we're dealing with, and we'll go from there. All right, so this is the quick mock-up we're going to be working off of. Just something small, compact, but with the elements we need for information's sake. So we're gonna be laying out this six foot wall here. We've got an intersecting wall and a 2040 window. And you can see our center line of that window is marked. So that is a two foot zero inch width of a window by four foot zero inch height. Our door here has a similar notation, 3068. So that's a three foot zero inch width by a six foot, eight inch height. So that's uh, easily confused when you're laying things out. Uh, you can go 30 by 68, which would be a very odd shaped door or 20 by 40, but windows and doors generally go in a foot, inch, foot, inch notation. So with this being our reference, let's get started on our layout. Now one of the first things you do when laying out is figure out where in your wall you're going to have a break, whether it's in this direction or in this direction. So for this six foot wall, I'm actually going to run it through this way and through this way. Now this is a two by six wall. So we have five and a half inches of two by six plate and a half inch of sheathing. Now that sheathing, if I run the wall all the way to here and here, is going to end at the corners of the face of the wall, but my side wall, the sheathing is actually gonna run past the end of that wall to lap onto the ends of these walls. That sheathing's thickness needs to be accounted for in this wall length. So since we're gonna have sheathing running past on both sides of our side intersecting walls, we remove a half inch from each side, which makes this plate length five foot 11, and once the sheathing is added from the other walls, that gives us our six foot layout. So our first step is cut our plates. So we're gonna cut those at five foot 11. So here I've got my plate material, just a couple of two by sixes. They're nice and square on this end. So I'm just gonna flush those up, use my nailer and tack that together. Put another tack down at the other end where they're flush. And then I can cut those both at the same time. So our measurement is 5 foot 11 to get our proper wall length. Mark that, square it, and we're going to roll the cut to keep our plates the same length. Once your plates are cut to length, the next thing you want to look at laying out is your openings and intersecting walls. So in this case, we've got uh, one intersecting wall for the closet and this window. Now, since we've taken off a half inch for sheathing on both sides, we need to account for that on our layout. So I'm going to hook on the end of my plate and for the center of my window, I need two feet. So I'm going to go two feet minus a half inch to account for that sheathing. So I mark the center of my window, 23 and a half inches. And then I mark the center of my intersecting wall, which will be three foot six minus that half inch. So three foot six minus a half inch. There's the center of my wall. Inch and three quarter both ways to give me my wall edges. Inch three quarter, inch three quarter. There's my intersecting wall. There's the center of my window. My window is at 2040, so now I can mark the edge of my windows so I know where to put in my structure. Half of two feet is one foot, so I put that on my center mark. Mark the edges of my window. Now there's two more intersecting walls that we have. We have our 
our outside walls that turn back this way. So we need to mark five and a half back each way and that's going to let us know where to put our wall backing and our top plate. So we mark five and a half back on each side. <coughs> plate looks like this. I'm also going to write in this opening the window size just so that when it is being framed we know our upper and lower jacks which ones need to get used. It's a conversation for another time. So with our intersecting wall marked and our opening marked next we need to think about structure. Now if there's joists sitting on top of this window it needs to be supported. So general rule of thumb around here is a two ply two by 10 for openings less than five feet and single cripples or trimmers, uh, whatever you want to call the studs that your supports are going to be sitting on. So I'm going to add that now. I'm just going to take my speed square, put it on an inch and a half, mark that as a cripple and put a king stud beside it. Do the same on the other side, mark my inch and a half, cripple and a king and two ply. Now on this end of the wall we need a stud for the end of the wall and we need drywall backing. So we'll do that as a California corner. Same on the other side. So we have a stud on edge for the end of our wall and a stud on flat for drywall backing and corner connection. Now that all of our interior is laid out, actually we have one more California corner right here. That gives us a king stud, drywall backing, and room to slip insulation behind it. Now with all that laid out, our intersecting walls and our openings, we can put in our common studs. Now what determines where the common studs go is going to be your floor layout or your um, truss layout and it just comes down to where you're going to be pulling your layout off of. Generally you want things to stack so I'm just going to pull from this side and that is really simple. There's not a lot of wall left here so we just hook on the end and we are going 16 inch common center so we go three quarter back from 16 so our stud lands in the middle. Got one stud there and everything else is already taken care of. So this is a small six foot wall, but you can see there's quite a few components that go into it. Let's take a quick look closer up. All right, so here's the wall that we were laying out and here it is laid out. We've got a king stud with drywall backing. This is where our top plate is, our cap plate is going to start. It's gonna travel this way. Then we've got structure for our window opening our header size, our opening size, and our intersecting wall with its backing, California corner to accommodate insulation, common layout, which only ended up being one stud in this case, and another California corner for our last intersecting wall. Now, the cap plate is gonna go between these two lines here so that when we frame this wall that intersects here, the very top plate, the cap plate, can run through and tie these walls together. When we frame this wall, our two foot to center of door is going to be from six inches beyond where this wall actually starts because we remember we frame this wall all the way out to here. So we have half inch sheathing, five and a half inch plate, then the start of this wall plate. So when I lay out that, I will actually put my tape measure on six inches at the end of the wall and then mark my two foot center and finish my opening size from there. Working off plans, you gotta keep that stuff in your head. If you've got this snapped out on the deck and you're putting your plates in place, it can be a little bit easier. 
I hope this helps. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. I will respond to them. Hit me up on Instagram at Byron Builds or hammer.com slash Byron Builds. You can find me there and uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Keep this information rolling. Abolish trade secrets. Have a good one, guys.